Back to politics, an independent MP, Rob Oakshot's expression of interest in the role of Speaker in the new Parliament. Let's get some reaction. Our political editor, Chris Yulman, is in Canberra. Thanks, Ali. And to discuss the politics of the day, I'm joined in Melbourne by Labor's Kelvin Thompson. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Chris. And in Adelaide, we're joined by Jamie Briggs from the Liberal Party. Jamie, good afternoon. G'day, Chris. G'day, Kelvin. <laughs> it's Jamie, Jamie Briggs, first to you. We've heard from Rob Oakeshott. He said that if he's nominated for Speaker, then he'll accept the nomination. That would mean a vote on the floor of Parliament. What do you make of what Rob Oakeshott's done? Uh, well, uh, I think he's indicated he's interested in being the Speaker, which probably doesn't come uh, as all that much surprise, given that he had... Uh, a, his major interest, it seemed, in the two weeks after the election in the negotiations with both sides of, of politics was on uh, parliamentary reform. So to that degree, I'm not necessarily surprised. Rob's been in Parliament for a long time, so he does understand how parliaments work federally and, and a state parliament, of course. So I, I'm not surprised how this now plays out, of course. Um, we'll have to see on, on the floor of the parliament. Um, uh, I understand the government has, is seeking legal advice. Um, as I understood it, any MP could nominate to be, uh, to be speaker or, or be nominated to be the speaker. But I guess it has implications, of course, on the numbers, given the numbers are so close uh, in the House. Kelvin Thompson, it does raise a few problems for the government. When one would expect that if the government put up a speaker and then and then they were beaten by Rob Oakeshott, then that, that raises some questions for the government about whether it can command the numbers on the floor of the House. Uh, well, of course it raises uh, legal issues, conceivably constitutional issues, Chris, and, and no doubt the government will be seeking advice about those things. I, I think it goes to show that we're in for a very interesting time of it in this next Parliament, and I personally don't think that's a bad thing. I think people have complained for years that Parliament's just a rubber stamp for the executive. Well, it's blindingly obvious that this Parliament's not going to be a rubber stamp for the executive. Uh, Kelvin Thompson, just looking at the way that the opposition might behave, they have signalled today that, uh, signalled yesterday, in the fact that Malcolm Turnbull's first job is going to be to demolish the NBN doesn't sound like a kind of gentler polity to me. Uh, no, it doesn't. But I, I think the, the bottom line in relation to the national broadband network is this. Either you support some government involvement or you think this matter should be left to the market. And the fact is that every time telecommunications infrastructure has been left to the market in the past, uh, country people have been stooged. Pri private sector involvement is interested in maximising returns. That means being involved in the big capital cities and the rural and remote areas miss out. Now the whole point of the national broadband rollout is to extend this to 93% of Australians and that, that's the reason why we believe that the government involvement is essential. Jamie Briggs, are you stooging the country? <laughs> no, well, look, uh, our policy was very clear. Where What we said is we would fill black spots in, in electorates like mine, for instance, which are outer metro and regional areas, uh, for areas like Mylor, where uh, at the moment uh, the punters there can't get broadband uh, because they're too far away from exchange or their exchange needs an upgrade and Telstra are reluctant to upgrade that exchange. Our policy was directed at those sorts of areas. That sort of area will not be picked up by um, this great big white elephant that the government's talking about in its NBN. Uh, I don't think it should come as a surprise that Malcolm's first job is to demolish the NBN. That was our policy leading into the election. Uh, we'll sell our policy, sell the benefits of our policy at the same time, uh, but we do not want the Australian people to be foisted with this, this great big white elephant of a policy which will, will end up being less value to the uh, taxpayer than what but, it will cost the But just the briefly, the problem you had was that you couldn't sell your policy, wasn't it? Well, at the end of the day, uh, that's for um, smart political commentators such as yourself to make those judgments. It's just a question. Um, <laughs> we'll, con we'll continue to... Uh, well, we'll... we'll fight on these issues. This is an important issue. The government is planning on spending $43 billion. Now, I know given the waste and mismanagement that this government has uh, been uh, subject to in the last three years, it do doesn't seem like a lot of money uh, for the Rudd government. However, it is still uh, a great deal of money. We don't believe it should be uh, spent in this way and we're going to be fighting against it to try and prevent the waste and mismanagement we saw uh, in the last three years. But Kelvin Thompson, interestingly, Chris, uh, just go on. 
I, I was going to say that uh, I th don't think people should be so excited about the $43 billion figure. In fact, that figure was set prior to the agreement with Telstra and the mm, estimates are that that will reduce the cost by anything up to $6 billion. And the NBN general manager, Mike Quigley, has said that the, the taxpayer equity, the government equity, is likely to be of the order of $27 billion rather than 43 taking into account NBN's capacity for earnings of its own. Furthermore, the, the point about uh, country Australia remains very important, that the broadband rollout is something that will be good for e-health, good for the provision of education and make it easier and more cost effective to do business in country Australia. So uh, Tony Windsor and uh, independents who looked at this thing said uh, do it once, do it right and do it with fibre. But the, the, the thing that Malcolm Turnbull's doing is he's attacking the business case, he's saying this is a massive destruction yeah, of right. money and, and isn't that a real worry for you Kelvin? Uh, I believe that the, the rollout of broadband will take Australia forward. The fact is that we have been behind in broadband compared with other countries. Uh, we need to get ahead in this regard. This will greatly increase the speed at which people can access information and do business and therefore it will be good for Australia. Jamie Briggs? Chris, well, just a couple of points. I, to a degree, I, I actually agree with Kelvin. Um, the broadband is very important, absolutely important to uh, the future of our country and the future of our uh, productivity needs. It is, it is a huge enabler. There's no doubt about that. And in, in some parts, the broadband systems have been behind. However, that's not true across the country. Uh, of course, in most city areas, broadband speeds are very good uh, and people get uh, great access to speeds and download capacity. Of course, in some other areas, out of metro and regional, it's, it's a bit more patchy uh, and it does require some work. But just on the points about costing, um, one of the issues with the costing is, of course, that this is based on at the moment on putting uh, uh, wires on overhead power lines. Now, in my area, that's just not going to get approved by the council. So the business case, as Malcolm Turnbull points out very well, is not yet well thought through. It's based on a lot of assumptions. So I think the $43 billion uh, figure is probably not right. As Kelvin said, it's probably going to be a lot higher than that at the end of the day. Kelvin Thompson, you would have experienced in Melbourne there was quite a reaction to overhead wires in the past. Uh, that's, that's correct, Chris, and I've uh, been very anxious to make sure that uh, my community and others have the opportunity to have a say in uh, anything of this character which has an impact on their neighbourhoods. As it happens, uh, one of the, the first trial areas, the only uh, metropolitan trial area, is in my own electorate in, in Brunswick, uh, and so far that's gone pretty smoothly. People have uh, been asking questions about it, but they haven't been raising objection to it, and I think it's important to, to note that broadband is being being rolled out already is being rolled out in Tasmania already and apparently very successfully in terms of, of cost and the other associated issues. Jamie Briggs, just a, a question on the politics of all this. You know, the first words out of the mouth of uh, Tony Abbott when he talks about appointing Malcolm Turnbull is that he wants them, uh, the, him to demolish the NBN. Do you think there's a, a real problem that if you are just seen as being obstructionist that that not, might not play very well in the electorate? Oh, I think that's right, but I don't think that's what everything that we're going to be. I think that we will look uh, to offer an alternative. Uh, we have a good alternative, in fact, uh, which, which talks about filling black spots and catching people up who, who, who don't have access to decent speeds at the moment. Uh, of course, Australia is such a vast continent that not one solution fixes broadband. Uh, we, need, we need a multi-faceted solution to, to fix uh, or to provide... Uh, options for people in particularly in country areas so that will, there will be a positive aspect to it but equally this government is planning on spending many many billions of dollars uh, on a system that we believe will will mean there's a lot of waste uh, will will um, cause the Australian taxpayer to lose value for money uh, again uh, with the Labor government and so of course that's going to be Malcolm's, uh, Malcolm's first order priority is exposing that uh, to try and stop it from going ahead to stop the waste. Well, Cal Malcolm Turnbull's back, Kelvin Thompson and Kevin Rudd is back. Do you think that we'll see through the course of the next three years a fascination with these formal leaders and leadership questions being raised routinely? Um, 
Well, it's, it's early days, too early to tell with something like this, but there's no reason why that needs to be so, Chris. Uh, the fact is that Simon Crean is now serving as a senior minister in, in the Labor government. Uh, he's a former Labor leader. That hasn't been an issue or a problem. Uh, indeed, in the, the previous Howard government, uh, Alexander Downer served as uh, Foreign Affairs Minister. Uh, I don't think he was much of a minister, but that wasn't to do with uh, the fact that he was a former leader. That, that was to do with his judgments about things like AWB and Iraq. I think the new member for Mayo is taking issue with it. <laughs> well, he's, he's, be he's, better th he's a better it's member a for Mayo than his predecessor, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, will you disagree with that, Jamie Briggs? <laughs> no, no, no. Alexander Downer was a, a, a sensational member for Mayo, and they have very big shoes to fill, as people remind me very often in the electorate. But Malcolm Turnbull, <laughs> can we be expected that a man who was so ambitious has put his, uh, his leadership baton away? Uh, well, Malcolm is uh, Malcolm's a sensational performer. He's a brilliant media performer. He's an intelligent man. Uh, he's an asset to the team. Uh, I think we saw in the election campaign that people went to him on significant questions, and and he was uh, playing the team game. Uh, I think he's been uh, very focused since he decided to continue his political career. It's obviously a huge disappointment when you lose the leadership, and there were awkward circumstances like last year. Uh, but he's right behind Tony Abbott. I, I don't think there's any question on our side at the moment of uh, splits and uh, uh, discontent. Uh, I think everyone's focused on trying to uh, provide the independents with a reason to change the pattern over to us and, and give okay. us an opportunity to govern at some point in this term. A very quick question to you both before we finish. We will see a very different kind of parliament. It will be, the parliament will be hung. It will be a lot closer in votes than has been in the past. Kelvin Thompson, are you looking forward to it? I am, Chris. Uh, I know some people are sort of all gloom and doom about the hung parliament, but I personally believe that it can be a good thing. Uh, it imposes a discipline on you if you have to persuade other people of the merits of your ideas in order to be able to get them through the House of Representatives, in order to be able to get them through the Senate, and, and so on. Uh, the fact is, if you can't persuade anybody else to agree with you, well, maybe your idea or policy wasn't so good in the first place. And there's experience in Victoria where... Steve Brax had to govern from 1999 with the support of three country independents and the kind of government that he gave during that term was given a massive thumbs up by the electorate. Conversely, John Howard was motoring along pretty well until 2004 when he got control of the Senate, put through work choices and lost his seat. So I think in politics sometimes you need to be careful about what, getting what you wished for. And Jamie Briggs, finally, last word to you. Yeah, look, I, I agree with Kelvin. I think the uh, uh, hung parliament brings a new discipline. I think the changes to the parliamentary procedures will be really good uh, as long as the government sticks to the, the commitments, which I sh I'm sure that they will because the independents will be committed to them. Uh, I think it gives um, you know, members of parliament a, a better opportunity to, to use the parliamentary forum, which you know, as, a, as someone who uh, respects very much the institution of parliament, I think it will be a better parliament this time than last. I think question time will be much improved and I think uh, we'll get much, a greater level of accountability uh, and a, gl a greater le level of debate. Jamie Briggs, Kelvin Thompson, thank you. Good to talk with Thanks, you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Kelvin.